Hi everyone, Sean here from Cordistry.com. Today I'm going to show you how to play The Box by Damien Rice. A slow, brooding, acoustic song. It's really emotional and really powerful. I'm going to show you all the different chords and chord progressions and strum patterns that we use in this song. Now if you check the description, you're going to find a link to the chord chart. While you're down there, you'll see my social media links and you can hit that subscribe button if you want more lessons just like this one. Okay, I'm going to zoom in now so we can check this one out. Okay, so we're in E standard today. Regular standard tuning. E, A, D, G, B, E. And we're using a lot of bar chord shapes in this tune. It's almost exclusively bar chords. So I'm going to show you how to play each one of these chords first. If you have these shapes down already, you can click here or the link in the description. Here are the chords that we're going to use today. This G major bar chord. This D9 shape. An E minor 7. And a B minor 7. This C bar chord. And then we have a D slash A chord. And an A minor 9 shape. Okay, so let's talk about each one of those chords. G major, as a bar chord, goes like this. Your first finger bars across the third fret on all six strings. Your third and fourth fingers go on fret five of the A and D strings. And then your second finger is going to go on fret four of the G string. Strum all six strings. Awesome. The next shape is going to be this right here. This is a D9 chord, and it looks sort of like a power chord, but played way high up on the top strings. Your first finger is on fret 5 of the G string, your third finger is on fret 7 of the B string, and your fourth finger is on fret 7 of the high E string. You just want to strum the D, G, B, and high E strings. Just those four in this shape. Really try hard not to hit the open A. It's not going to hurt, but just you want to hear that D as the root. Okay? An E minor 7 is up next. Take your first finger, bar across the 7th fret from the A to high E strings. Add your 3rd finger to fret 9 of the D string, and your 2nd finger to fret 8 of the B string. Strum the A to high E strings. That's an E minor 7. A B minor 7 goes like this. Your first finger bars across the 7th fret on all 6 strings. Your third finger goes on fret 9 of the A string. And I like to use my second finger to help out the first so I can really hear all of the notes that are being barred. Especially that D. You want the note on the D string to come out because that one is the one that makes this a 7. A minor 7. Without that note, it just sounds like a regular minor chord. So try hard to hit that D string. Okay, the next shape is a C bar chord. It's the exact same shape as this G down here, but just up at the eighth fret. Take your first finger bar across fret eight on all six strings. Add your third and fourth fingers to fret 10 of the A and D strings and your second finger to fret nine of the G string. Strum all six strings. There we go. The next shape, this one right here, I'm going to call this a D slash A chord. Even though it has a much longer name. The open strings are just going to be coloring the chord with a different sound. The notes you're holding down though make a D slash A chord. So your first finger goes on fret three of the B string. Your second finger goes on fret four of the D string. Your fourth finger goes on fret five of the A string. And your third finger goes on fret five of the low E string. So those are the four notes you're holding down, E, A, D, and B, but include the open G and the open high E. The real name for this chord is a D major 11 slash A. We're just going to think of it as a D slash A for this song. 
Okay, the, the next shape and the last shape we have to learn is an A minor nine. Super simple to make. Your second and third fingers are on fret five of the D and G strings, strum the A to high E strings. You can use your thumb to mute the low E, and that makes it much easier to strum all six strings. Nice. Those are the chords. Here is the verse. We're going to jump straight into our verse. There's no intro. We're also going to find there's no pre-chorus or there's no bridge to the song. There's only two sections, the verse and the chorus. So here's how the verse goes. It's a 16 measure verse. There's no repetition in those 16 measures. So we have to learn one chord at a time. We start on G. And then we go to D9. And then we go to E minor 7. Following that, we go to B minor 7. And then we go to C. After that, we go back to G. Following this G, we're going to go to D slash A. Following that chord, we go back to E minor 9. Excuse me, E minor 7. Okay? So that was our 16 measure verse. We only have 8 chord switches happening but it's 16 measures. Each chord is going to happen for two measures. So that makes it easy. And each chord is going to go through two of these one measure strum patterns. Here's how it goes. We're going to do down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. That's the strum pattern that we're going to use for this whole tune. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, down, down. Okay, so you hear when it repeats, we go down, down, up, up, down, down, down. So after the quick down up, we start over. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 down. Okay, so now let's break this chord progression down into two parts. I think it's a little bit easier to think of it as two groups instead of one large group. So here's the first half. We're going to go G to D9 to E minor 7 to B minor 7. Okay, that's how the chords move around. Again, we're going to strum two times through our strum pattern per chord, and that's going to make it a two measure group for each chord shape. G goes to D9 goes to E minor 7 goes to B minor 7 I also want to stop here because we have something going on inside of the B minor 7 chord. Because we have our pinky free, we can use it to hit some extra notes. So the note that I hear the most is this one right here, the 9th fret of the G string. So you can somewhere inside the strum pattern feel free to use your pinky to go to the, the ninth fret of the G string. You can also hit the ninth fret of the D string. So that's another option there. Okay, so that was the first half of the verse. The second half is going to go like this. We go C, G, D slash A, and E minor. It's only four chords, two measures per chord.
on that last E minor 7 chord, you might want to do this. Here's what Damien Rice does. He includes the open low E string in that E minor 7 shape. So we're just doubling the root note an octave down. We have this E, we have that E as well. So it makes it extra bassy, extra moody, just like this song is. So do that on the very end of the verse. That's going to lead us into the chorus. So you're only going to play through those 16 measures just once. We don't repeat it. We're going to go straight into the chorus. And the chorus is the only other section we have, and it's super easy. We're going to start on an A minor 9 chord. Play the same strum pattern that you've been doing for the verse. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. All right, two times through that, which would be two measures, and then we go to an E minor seven. Do the same thing, include that open low E. So that's two measures. So all together it makes a four measure group. We play those four measures four times around, making a 16 measure section. So we have a 16 measure verse and a 16 measure chorus. All right, so we're just gonna go back and forth between that A minor nine and that E minor seven chord. What you wanna do though, is make a really long dynamic arc from the beginning to the middle to the end of this chorus because you wanna be able to really drive that rhythm loud and broad but also bring it back down towards the end so that it's nice and seamless when we start the next verse over. So I'll play it for you. I'll show you how you can do that. You're just gonna use the same strum pattern, maybe add some extra strums in there, but more, you're going to start soft, bring it out, play loud, bring it back down for the end. So just listen, here's how you would do that. Did you hear how it was one big wave like that going up in dynamics and then back down? That adds some extra composition to the song. It's not just a chord progression. It's not just a strum pattern. There's extra stuff in it that dynamic expansion and contraction makes this song have so much emotion to it. And once you get used to playing with those other ideas, not just the actual notes, but like how you play them, it really gives the music some life. So that's how you would do the chorus. And then once you're done that, you jump to the verse again. You're gonna play that 16 measures all again. There's no half verse for this song, it's just the same length as the beginning. And then once you're finished that, you're gonna play another chorus. And then after that, you're just gonna ride out that chord progression until the end of the song. Okay? So that's how this tune goes. We only have two sections. So once you have them down, it's very simple. You just put it to the music and you just sing along and it's amazing. This is a really, really great song. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please click this link to listen to the playthrough so you can hear how it goes from beginning to end. If you'd liked this lesson, hit that like button. And please, if you haven't yet, you can also hit that subscribe button so you can get more lessons just like this one. All right, thanks for watching. My name is Sean, and I'll see you next time with another lesson.